All right, here's a quick video about a simple solution to Harley's oil slobbering problem. Um, other people may have other problems and they're using the term slobbering, so I don't know if this is a solution for everybody, but I was getting a lot of oil accumulating in my intake and I want to keep that off my intake valves for better performance and just general principle of keeping it all clean. Let's start at the source. There goes a car. Uh, the source is the oil to begin with. I suggest you run in the low side of the safe zone. I'm using the cap here as if it's the dipstick. If you're running high in the, in the safe zone all the time, really full on oil, that makes the problem worse. Try and run low and maybe halfway into the safe zone at the most. The reason for that is the less oil you have in there, the more air you have above the oil. The oil will not compress, but the air will. So if you leave as much, as many cubic inches of air in your crankcase on top of the oil, that will smooth out the pulsation. You've got a relentless pulsation from these pistons going up and down, and that forces the vapors or the, the crankcase fumes up top. The more cubic airspace you have above that oil, you're increasing the cubic airspace for that to compress and it becomes less violent and less aggressive. You'll get less of those fumes up to the top breather outlets to begin with. Uh, and next, a uh, quick look at my simple solution. It works at three different, it kind of works at three different principles at the same time. The oil converts to a vapor in the motor in the heat of the crankcase and the heat of the motor. Well, of course, Bar Harley had a little baffle, little Brillo pad baffles in each head, but they don't last. They wear out quick and you start getting all these oil vapors coming into your intake through these S curve, these little S pipes on each from each breather to the back of the air cleaner. So of course the first thing I did is tape the holes on this back side of the air cleaner. You can't really see it. Where the where these lines used to go in, I've taped them so I'm not running unfiltered air. And my basic solution, which works in three ways, is this. It's about a foot and a half of clear quarter inch line. The first thing it does is it extends the path that the vapors have to travel. That gives the vapors a chance to convert back to a liquid oil. The second principle is it's routed below the air cleaner and back up on the opposite side. There's one for each head, by the way. As it goes below, as it goes below in that extended path before it reaches the atmosphere, it has more ch more time to cool. Then gravity can trap it below the air, air cleaner. And then at the end, those lawnmower fuel filters are there acting as a baffle. That's really the third principle in effect here. We're lengthening the path to give it more time to cool. We're trapping it underneath with gravity. And we're baffling any remaining vapors that might make it all the way to that lawnmower fuel filter. There's a little bit of mesh in there that will act as a baffle. Um, of course, with this method, you want to open, it's just one screw on my bike, undo one screw, open this up and check for accumulated and water and oil vapor on the bottom side in a low section of these lines. It's a trap, basically. Uh, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a quote from some sci-fi movie, I forget. But, uh, anyway, it's a trap. You're just trapping the oil vapors below your air cleaner. Now, I've just put this in, um, and I ran it for a little while, and I got water vapors immediately. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and make sure I'm not filling up and flooding out with water vapors too fast. Um, but if you're watching this video, the water vapors have evaporated on their own and did not become an issue. But you immediately get steam. Like within five minutes of running the motor, you get steam on the inside of the clear lines. So the water vapor is almost an immediate effect. But um, I'm going to ride it. I'm going to put some miles on it. And hopefully uh, there's a quick enough evaporation where water itself doesn't become an issue. Um, even if water accumulates in those lines, the oil will still be trapped on top of the water. 
Uh, this is my system. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. If you're watching this video, it means I put some miles on the bike and I checked it. Of course, with this system, and a newer, this is a 2001, it's got the older fuel injection. It's possible with the newer bikes with the oxygen sensors and a modern fuel injection, it could recognize that something has changed and you might get a code. Um, if you get a code and it's related to IAT, intake air temperature, that's a no-brainer. You can complete the loop and go back into your air cleaner. And if you need to drain it, you can detach it from the breather lines, let it drain, and then reconnect it. But completing the loop back to the air cleaner, if your new bike is sensitive enough to pick up an intake air temperature code, because it'll be, it'll be losing a source of hot air out of the crankcase. If your newer bikes throw a code and it, you may be able to, com, you know, if you complete that loop, it's a good chance that that will uh, clear that code and av avoid that intake air temperature uh, code. I don't know how sensitively they're calibrated, these new bikes, but this, the, uh, these crankcase breathers are a source of hot air, so it's possible it will affect your intake air temperature. Um, that's not the end of the world, you know, just reroute it back into the air cleaner and you should maintain the similar temperature. The point of this, the cooling I talked about, it's not excessive enough. It's just, it's just cools enough to convert to a liquid. I think that hot air rerouted will still satisfy your intake air temperature if your intake air temperature sensor even recognizes the difference of having uh, eliminated those crankcase gases. All right.